We're now going to move to the last bit of information we're covering in Physics 141, that of oscillations and wave motion. So we've talked about kinematics, we've talked about dynamics and energy, we just finished off thermodynamics. So we're going to talk a little bit about wave motion and simple harmonic motion. And these types of motion are very important when we talk about sound, which we'll do in the last unit of Physics 141. And we'll come back to it next semester in Physics 142 when we talk about light. So, Physics 141, oscillatory motion and waves. Well, what does it mean to oscillate? Right? What is that definition? Well, oscillation is just to move back and forth between two points. Right? Some people can oscillate between decisions. You know, should I buy the car? Shouldn't I buy the car? Um, a, a child on a swing or an adult on a swing uh, is oscillatory motion back and forth motion between two points. A wave is just really generally a disturbance that moves from its source and carries energy. So earthquakes are waves. Some disturbance carries energy outward, right? The tidal waves or tsunamis or toppling buildings, shifting earth. Uh, sound waves. It's a disturbance that carries energy, sound wave energy. If you've ever been to a rock concert and you feel the bass in your chest, that energy is transmitted from the speakers. That's a sound wave. Light wave is a disturbance, an electromagnetic disturbance we'll learn next semester, that carries energy from its source to, you know, outward. So the sun can burn you from 93 million miles away because the light waves carry energy from the sun. The energy hits your skin, your skin absorbs that energy and heats up and burn you. Ultraviolet radiation. So, We'll be talking first about oscillation motion and talking about simple harmonic motion, the simplest type of oscillation motion. And then we'll extend that a bit to talk about wave motion, which is a little more complex. Now, before we get started, uh, this is a series of a lot of small lectures in this unit, 3.4. A couple of refresher items. The first is Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law, if you remember, we talked about springs, was there's a restoring force F, which is equal to minus K, where K is the spring constant or elastic constant of the object, um, the elastic object that's tugging, times X, which is the displacement from the equilibrium point. So I have some mass on a spring, right? So drawing that out, I have, let's draw it out over here. So I have some wall, I have a spring, and I have some mass on that spring that's sitting on a frictionless table at some position x equals zero. That's when the spring is relaxed. It's not being stretched or compressed. Now, if I move this mass in either direction, if I move it to the right, I'm stretching the spring out. If I'm moving it to the left, I'm compressing the spring. Either motion creates a force that opposes that motion. If I move it to the right, I get a force backwards to the left. If I compress it, I get a force backwards to the right. That force is in the opposite direction of the motion, which is why it's called a restoring force. It's trying to restore the system to the equilibrium position. And the negative sign there means that the force is in the opposite direction to the displacement. So if the displacement is positive, the force is in the negative direction. If the displacement is negative, the force is in the positive direction. So that's just a refresher on Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law this restoring force is really responsible for a lot of simple harmonic motion, oscillatory motion. Second is elastic potential energy. This is the energy stored in a system that's stretched or compressed. Right? If you've ever had an old wind-up watch, if you wind up that watch or an old wind-up alarm clock that doesn't use batteries, when you wind or a toy, you wind up and it goes. When you wind something up, you're storing energy in the spring inside that system. How much energy do you store? Well, it's equal to one half times the spring constant. And you can think of, again, the spring constant as the stiffness of the spring. The stiffer the spring, the harder it is to compress or stretch the spring, the more energy you can store in that spring. And it depends on the displacement squared. So not just the force depends on just the displacement. The energy is the displacement squared. 
So these are both refreshers from earlier discussions about forces and energy. I just want to refresh uh, these concepts before talking about simple harmonic motion.